I'm really pleased to be part of the stage today. And I'd like to thank all of you, the organization of uh, Ajo Women Founders and Entrepreneurs, and especially Mrs. Lillian for the invitation. Um, I hugely apologize for the speedness of my speech because, uh, but I have a lot of things, important things to share with you today. And I'd like to get them all in the frame in the time given. So please bear with me, okay? Thank you. So uh, today I'm here to share my experience as a woman entrepreneur and mentor and um, to give you all my own personal vision of uh, what power means in entrepreneurship especially the female one. Uh, to do this, I must just introduce to you a brief visual perspective of the global female entrepreneurs. Um, we've entered into an era of women's empowerment where uh, they are awakening to the potential of being uh, successful business owners. Uh, these are years in which the number of women um, owned businesses is on the rise. But at the same time, at the same time, there are a few main and unique challenges uh, that may, many find themselves facing. Although women are becoming braver about um, going after their career dreams. And I'm not talking about uh, the corporate female boss babes, you know. No, I'm talking about moms who work from home, uh, about freelancers and business women who leave their secure full-time salaries for maybe something riskier. Um, it's a becoming the norm to see working women in every field and uh, more opportunities are being presented to women. Uh, it's a matter of fact that there are three major common challenges as a woman in business and uh, still persist for female entrepreneurs regardless of industry. And there are number one, lack of funding because it's very, it's harder for women to get loans than men. This is a matter of fact. Number two, uh, a low self confidence. That is to say that uh, women who struggle with low self-confidence, self-worth and self-esteem can easily project those traits onto their businesses. You know, um, women find it very difficult at times to keep their emotions out of business. Then number three, and let's talk about the market saturation because of the fact that so many doors have opened uh, for women to pursue entrepreneurship. Certain fields have become saturated and uh, getting noticed among competitors is a very hard work nowadays. So the challenge has been to research and strategize how to set yourself up an authority in your own field, offering insightful tips and networking to um, gain trust from your, your potential um, clients. So um, women need to get off the sticky floor and liberate themselves by developing a growth mindset to thrive in a, a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Women need to recognize the power within themselves to break free from the sticky floor. So what all of us starting a new business should remember is that uh, the startup starts with you, nothing but you. For you to be successful and creating an entrepreneurial company, something quintessential has to occur inside of you before you open your business's doors. Something I call um, the moment of inspiration, or that, let's say, I love the word, the sudden scene. The sudden scene is in, it's the epiphany that happens when in one inscrutable revelatory instance, the world reveals its secrets to you. That is a rare and indelible moment indeed. It is there in that lucid moment of clarity that the entrepreneur is provided with a rare glimpse inside a mystery, which is exactly what business is. It is a mystery in which people, processes, systems, ideas, and facts, and an overriding single-minded purpose come 
together to produce an original result. Um, the result is a result worthy of having spent a lot of time, money, imagination, and energy to produce. Um, all of this, we must remember this, all of this began in the mind, in the heart and imagination of an entrepreneur before anything else happens. All of this is begun through a process that uh, usually comes about through an accident, an interaction, a confluence of forces no one intended, but that moved the momentum of the entrepreneur's fertile, um, fertile imagination to pick up and to take notice and then to pursue whatever impression came to his or her attention and to discover where the momentum was going. So um, it is also, uh, let us say that uh, it's also about awakening the entrepreneur in you in us, let us say that. It's about simulating a clear understanding in, in you about what truly artful, effective, dedicated entrepreneurs do. That moves them and the business products they invent beyond all the rest of us. Um, ultimately though, um, it's about also being personally invited into what I call um, the dreaming room where new businesses are born. We must all remember anyway that uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are made, they are not born. This, there is no corner on creativity. There is simply the desire to express it. Once that desire appears, you can be assured that you have um, awakened the entrepreneur with, within you. Um, and the very presence of that desire means that the entrepreneur is, is up and he's dreaming, so he's active. And most of all, it's about not stalking to what it is, the basic meaning to most people, uh, that is the standard definition, which says that an entrepreneur is the person who um, organizes, who manages and assumes the risk of a business or enterprise. No, to me, it means something more, um, it is, only someone who um, decided to build something out of nothing. It's someone who wakes up every day, not knowing exactly what to expect. Uh, it's someone who jumped off the ledge uh, without a parachute. It's an emotional roller coaster. I can, I can just state this, filled with heartbreak, glory, a lot, a lot, a lot of stress and immense satisfaction, by the way. For those of you who understand what I'm saying, I'm sure you can relate with me. But uh, for everyone else, for those of you who are wondering what it's like to be an entrepreneur, let me give you some personal insight. Um, let me just take you out of the glorified media bubble of billion dollars exit or the pretty colored uh, unicorns. Let me tell you a little secret <laughs> just between us. It's a damn war. It's really a damn war to be an entrepreneur because you wake up every day uncertain. Um, a, a time you are ideal away from glory and an event you are away from failure. One day is the best day of your life followed by the next, that is the worst day of your life. Uh, one day you may be a hero and the next day you just big fat zero. So. Now that you know the truth, we get uh, uh, that out of the, and we have got, got that out of the way. Let's talk about why we do this and why we put ourselves through um, these globes, let me say it, of craziness. The number one misconception, of course, is that we do it all for the money. For those of you who are thinking about hopping this crazy game and want uh, to do it just for the money, let me just pose a few questions to you. Now, if you're thinking solely of your, let's say your mansion in Banana Island or your new G6 or your Ferrari. Now, how are you going to think of ways you can create value for your clients? If you are 
sitting there dreaming of market share and billion dollar opportunities and only thinking about how much you can capitalize. How can you come up with ideas to enhance your user experience? You know, while you're sitting in your bedroom thinking of trips to London, uh, parties in Dubai and shopping on the LA Boulevard, that is very nice, very cute, nice. But at the main time, your clients need help. People need better experiences and industries in general need to be disrupted. So please don't get me wrong. Um, I like the fluidity of gaining something from my vision. That's out of doubt. But I just know that money is a measurement of creating value. If you focused on only making money for yourself, then um, you cannot be focused on creating that value that you need to attract clients and potentially make a profit. So now that we know uh, it's not entirely about the bling. Then we, then one may ask, why do we do what we do? For me, the answer is in the question itself. The answer to why we do what we do is in, guess, the why. <laughs> because the why helps me get through my day. The why gets me through my sleepless night and the why motivates me to build the best products and services that I can build. Uh, if you know why, it helps you answer any question. You may have uh, a, or deal with any issue that will 100% happen to you. So for me, the why is that I want to connect different people together through entrepreneurship. I believe that different cultures throughout time have broken down political and social boundaries through um, working with each other to achieve common goals. I believe that collaboration is, is a byproduct of evolution and we will become a better world when we decide all to work together. I know that this may seem like um, I see the world through, uh, let's say rose colored glasses, but I have been, I've seen things in my, with my own eyes really. Uh, through my project, for instance, of uh, Metisage Sanguemisto, I have seen um, all types of people from uh, different, different, different types of uh, backgrounds. And uh, I've seen them working together these people are working on their own version of their why and not listening to the rumors and the noise around them. So the why is why I do what I do and it motivates me every day to push on. My ultimate advice is um, learn why. Find passion in your why and feel the purpose behind your why. After you have learned it, after you have mastered it, then leave it, breathe it, but never, never, never lose the sight of the why and hustle on. So uh, once we have defined who is an entrepreneur and what he is his or, or he, her why, let's say, let's see what we mean when we talk about power. We must not believe it's all about um, supremacy, title, position, authority, and control. If you do so, you will find it a very big challenge. People are captivated by the power of others. This is a matter of fact too. Who has it, how they got it, and how they use it? Entrepreneurs can give, you, can give themselves any title or position they want. They have complete authority to do, to do whatever they want and whenever they want, and they have ultimate control. But ask any successful entrepreneur how much time they spend thinking about this type of power and they will laugh because the answer is zero. But ask these successful business people about the importance of energy, clarity, confidence, impact, and influence. 
and you'll get a very different response. You know, entrepreneurs know their success is almost totally dependent on this definition of power. So how and how do we want to define, make a definition of power? Let us say that literature tell us that power is ability, influence, energy, and positional authority. I have to add that the biggest problem in business today is that too often we ignore the first three definitions due to our preoccupation with the fourth, that is positional authority. We look always look on the top of the organization chart to learn where the power lies in any team or group. Me, myself, I learned that uh, the real power is available to everyone by the choices we make in different areas of our professional lives or even in our life in itself. My personal vision of power is, number one, as I said before, influence, and it increases as we offer more support to others. Being powerful is more about giving support than getting support. Contrary to what we may have ta been taught about power, service is the higher form of leadership. Serving others is the key to sustainable growth. And it creates the kind of influence that truly powerful people exercise, the kind that, um, let's say, resonates and uh, uplifts. Then again, real power, my own vision is clarity and it gets stronger with discipline. Discipline is fundamental. Having power is more about creating an environment that encourages every individual to engage in their own form of self-discipline. Discipline brings clarity to any situation, increasing an individual's power. Then again, um, I, power is also energy because it intensifies from inside our own uh, insight, where, where it grows. Insight is an, let's say, um, an integral element of being powerful. The person with real power does not influence the world around him or her without consideration of the bigger picture that begins, of course, inside of himself, let's say so. Um, again, power is impact, as I said before, and uh, it grows as it focuses with creativity. It goes together. And then power again is confidence and it rises as we better understand and live our values. What do we stand for when we speak about values and act accordingly? You increase your power because you are confident in your sessions, right? Okay, so the power is palpable, is effective. Then again, um, power is networking because a very, it's a very misunderstood word, the one of networking. Whenever you talk with someone, in effect, you are networking, right? So you have the ability to talk to, uh, impress others to, and um, uh, this is a very fundamental thing in my own vision of what power means. Then last but not the least, I have to say that real power is a growth mindset, which is about freedom. So um, I'd like to conclude with a reality that all entrepreneurs know. We know that successful entrepreneurs are optimizers they don't have time to waste. Let's, for instance, consider uh, roadmaps. Uh, you are driving preferences may change during different times and under different circumstances, right? But a roadmap, we always offer alternatives. At times, the most direct way from point A to point B may not be the best for you. Sometimes you want to go fast. Other times you want to slow down and enjoy the ride. Or you might want to take a detour and travel through certain communities to reach your destination. Um, when things don't go as planned, a roadmap gives you an alternative to fall back. And tomorrow, 
when both your starting point and your destination change, a roadmap will continue to serve you well. So early in my career, I relayed on what I had learned about roadmaps as um, an analogy for life. Um, I believed that no matter where I wanted to go, there would always be a road to get me there. But the analogy let me down when I found myself um, wanting to go places where others hadn't gone before, where there was no paved road. And it was then that I came to truly appreciate and learn that there is a tool to use when you know what general direction you like to go. Um, but um, you will find that um, you make better choices and, uh, and these choices are more successful as you get better connecting what you do to who you are. And this is where, according to me, your true power, my true power, our youth true power comes from. So I hope you all that and more, dear friends, because this is going to be a hard work. Sometimes you'll enjoy it, sometimes you'll have fun, sometimes you won't enjoy it, you will simply not have fun. Uh, but you have to have always in mind that to create a miracle company or a miracle life, it takes a magnificent sense of the surreal. It's a con that's exactly where you must trust for your participative and mindful intention. Thank you very much. Thank you.